Hello everyone, uh, Mark Sergeant uh, again, and uh, uh, let us below of uh, the Z-Sphere rig that we created um, and uh, take a look how it could be converted into a Dynamesh. Now let me load it up, so I don't need a light box. Come up, turn it off, Control O to open up the figure. And because it's a ZBrush project, now as you see, uh, we are instantly uh, switch to edit mode so uh, I can uh, pick up uh, as I left so uh, it's easy to follow if you're working with a ZBrush project. Alright now what kind of change uh, I need to make before I turn this model into a uh, Dynamesh model. If I press A it will show the uh, preview of the model so there are no overlaps there are no distortions so it's a quite good uh, set okay just let me turn it back so it's relatively fine what I do want to check is if there is something that's going on wrong but there's no problem here now it might be an issue if I take a closer look around here at the fingers now um, before I make this a, a dynamesh just let me check uh, the Z spheres. Okay, so a couple of Z sphere uh, I might want to add. So usually the less spheres you have, the better solution you get at the end. But there's a chance you want to add some kind of a piece. So in this case, uh, Q draw mode uh, symmetry is turned on. It's important. Now I create one uh, Z sphere. It's it's kind of a chin. So switch to move mode make it smaller so if I press A now I have a face like this it's quite ugly but uh, in some cases if you're uh, creating animals or animal like shapes uh, it's a good idea to create now I'll leave it as it is so um, it's not a big deal and uh, let me check other parts maybe um, if I want to emphasize the heel I can add a uh, separated uh, part for the heel, uh, for example, like this. So I'm going back to draw mode, selecting the Z sphere, adding the, another one, another joint, pulling this up, make sure that these are separating, probably a uh, more change in the volume, and pulling it this one closer to the body. Now, let me check how is it working, and this is a nice overlap. So uh, even if this joint is actually disappearing because of the overlap, uh, it is still creating a nice mesh, so you don't have to worry about this. This is why you have to check uh, preview frequently. Okay, now uh, leave it as it is. Uh, I want to add some distance between the fingers to make sure that these are not melting. But let me check first the resolution of the Dynamesh. Because what you see here in the preview, uh, it is adjustable. So if we're walking down and take a look at uh, edit up the skin, uh, this preview is actually uh, driven by the hotkey A. So if I'm pressing on and off, uh, we're turning on and off this preview actually. Now we have two density type of sliders. The first one, this this one's called actually density. It is uh, related to the shaping of your figure. Now, because it's relatively low, you will see this blocky element. But if you take a look at a closer look and turn on Shift F, that shows the wireframe. Now, it's a little bit of a strange thing that you have these uh, kind of blocky uh, surfaces, but within that blocky surfaces, you have plenty of tiny polygons. Now, these two are independent. The tiny polygons are coming from the Dynamesh resolution itself, and the density is coming from uh, the shaping is coming from density slider. So we'll crank this up about four is kind of good midway to smooth out the details. Now, as you see, if I'm turning off Shift F, save frame, uh, this model is quite smooth. Okay, so we can work uh, with this model relatively um, easy. Now do we need that much of a resolution at the beginning I don't think so if you start sculpting on a model like this 
you, you don't really have any details so uh, the main details are just the smallest details are actually the fingers but even for the fingers you don't need that high resolution now what happens if we are lowering the resolution we have to take a look and pay attention for the smallest details because we don't want to erode uh, details now remember that Dynamesh has the tendency to erode details if the resolution is too low you uh, you will lose some information so uh, what happens if we are uh, dialing it back to 128 um, let me uh, turn it back okay now as you see um, honestly I'm satisfied with the resolution my problem is not the resolution it is this melting effect okay now how to avoid that melting effect there's nothing fancy going on here we just have to spread the fingers a bit more so I will go back to the move and just spend some time spreading the fingers and pressing A okay now it's it's quite good one still not perfect but it's relatively good so I can just fine-tune uh, this one is nice these are also nice okay it's just it's a good looking model all right later on it's it's quite easy to uh, fill the, these gaps so you don't have to uh, worry about these too much now it's it's too close okay it's fine all right now add to uh, some realism to the fingers as you see we have no joints along the fingers so in real life we have two more joints here but scoffing it's not really a necessity to have all the joints accurately especially for those tiny ones at the, uh, at the early stage of the modeling so it's enough if we are just going back to the Q mode try mode and insert a couple joints in the middle okay it will still have the same effect as we have uh, multiple joints uh, so I'll go back to move mode and just dragging these end joints to, to add some curvature to the fingers and yeah it looks a little bit odd so uh, let me check it A okay there's some natural curvature of course the width of the fingers is, is quite uh, big but at this stage we are not really worried about this at least we have a nice hand okay um, probably we can uh, change the dynamo solution just a little bit so instead of 128 128 I will mm, dial it up to 140 hit enter preview a on and off and okay it's much cleaner here fine now this will be my model just let me check other areas like um, like legs also legs are working fine now what's going on what is the next step so once your preview is done and you made your adjustment uh, it is not a model yet that you can work on you can start working on this model but it is not a finished uh, one it's kind of a uh, temporary stage of a preview so if you are satisfied you can hit make adaptive skin now uh, just take a look at here before we are actually using the make adaptive skin just walk up here at the tools and as you see we have this Z sphere underscore one model this is our model now when you are hitting this make adaptive skin button it will create a new model for you and that new model will be placed at the palette so now we have a skin underscore Z sphere underscore one and that is your actually newly created model so we are still using the preview so we can turn this off and now we are getting back to the Dynamesh of oh, sorry the Z-Sphere rig that we created and within the subtools this is just a Z-Sphere underscore one model now if you want to work with the if you want to start your sculpting you have to switch to your Z-Skin Z Z-Skin uh, Z-Sphere model and this is the model that you can actually sculpt uh, 
I like to keep my files in one unit in as one subtool uh, because it's easier to save, uh, especially if I'm saving as a tool. So right now, I will copy this skin Z sphere. So one subtool selected, I'm going in and copy, going back to my original file. That's one is just a simple Z sphere underscore one, and paste it. Now I have the rig, the Z sphere. Uh, let me turn solo mode on. Okay, I cannot turn solo mode on because it's not visible here. Uh, so uh, I have to adjust it in the next time. So right now, if I just turn it off with the eye, you see uh, there is a uh, Z square rig and there is a, uh, a skin. Let me rename it. We'll name this will be the body. And the Z sphere, this will be just a simple Z sphere instead of underscore one. And uh, whenever I want to edit my body, I can go back, turn off the visibility of Z sphere, and now everything is ready to work. Okay, so that's one option. And what kind of work? Uh, at, at the beginning, usually it's nothing else, just uh, managing the volumes. And for that, uh, the first thing you want to use is usually the move brush, so BMV. And the symmetry is established, so that's fine. Changing the size because we like to use the largest brush possible. If the brush is too small, you will waste your time with details early on. And those details actually could be useless at the beginning. So let me smooth this out. Refresh, okay. There's a hunchback, so make sure that the there is some chin going on, okay. Um, let me emphasize this hunchback by adding volume to the body, okay. It's just a simple move tool, uh, adding using the alt key to uh, alter the move function a bit you know alt key is pulling out and pushing back sometimes it's really handy um, make a bit more distance at the, at the arms all right uh, probably I want a little bit bigger feet so pulling it back okay now this is just a fundamental phase for uh, legs okay it's not so nice so I have to drag it more okay right so once the initial move uh, is done uh, the figure is still standing uh, that's nice uh, I can go back and edit more details like the BCT brush with the clay tubes so and refresh don't forget to use the smooth uh, you can use multiple strokes but uh, you don't want to keep uh, the mesh to uh, so try to make it smooth if it's possible at, at least at the beginning because if you break up uh, on the surface too much it will uh, it, it can really distract you uh, the creative process so I'm adding more on the volumes adding thickness connecting the arms to the body with more meat okay just refreshing the model filling up this gap refreshing isn't smooth okay so adding more uh, the first stage of uh, adding the volume is all about fixing the joints so for example around this ankle of course we need to add some details fixing it up smoothing adding more fix it okay right so that's it basically and uh, we can work on uh, this model now what happens if you want to add something else uh, for example if you want to add horns to this guy. Uh, we can still use Z squares uh, with the same manner, just uh, let me show uh, other variations of adding uh, Z square content. 
to something like this. So we have the original Z square, but uh, right now we don't want to modify that one. We actually want to add another details by using the insert. So I'm clicking on insert and Z square is added. And because uh, the visibility was turned off for the body, let me turn it back on. Now it looks like we have some kind of a screen bear. Okay, but no, we want to create horns. Now, um, if we want to create a horns, um, the best idea if we are just uh, pulling it back on, switching to move and uh, establish symmetry. Now it's important when you are creating a new Z sphere rig, you want to adjust the um, symmetry. So if you don't have the symmetry, it's quite easy to move this Z square off from this central plane of symmetry of X. So use symmetry uh, right after created the Z square. So to, don't forget to turn it on. Okay, let me switch to scale mode. And uh, I'm scanning it down, switching to move. Okay, and now it's inside the head. Okay, so. It's not a see-through. Uh, I don't have my buttons are too large. Transparency. Okay, now we can turn on tr transparency. Um, so this this thing is actually inside the head of the die, and I will just go to draw mode and just the same way as I did with the limbs, we'll create two sides. Z squares switching to move. Pull them aside. A little bit behind. Pull it back. Q again and move it so now i have these two horns okay it's not the nicest just let me add another segment okay so this is this is my horn if i'm pressing a that is my preview this one is not a complete mesh remember because it's not adjusted it is not accepted this is just a preview now, what if I want to make uh, a model of this? Uh, the process is the same. So this was not updated, but let me switch uh, back and forth. I can con uh, use the preview, going walking down, and uh, within uh, adaptive skin, make my settings. So it's instead of two, I will use the four as usual. Um, uh, if it's too blocky, just let me fix that. So I'm turning back off uh, the adaptive skin, switching to Q because it's draw mode, make it smaller, insert another couple, sorry, another couple links, switch to move mode, adjust it. Okay, now it's a li little bit more rounded. Let me scale this guy down a bit. Also this one. Now this preview is much more looks like horn. Um, and if I'm satisfied, I can hit Make Adaptive Skin. Now, don't forget, when you hit Make Adaptive Skin, it will create an entirely new model, separated from my main. And uh, usually, it has the skin prefix. So, prefix. Uh, so, um, what I have to do is here's my Z-Sphere 1 model, and there's a number at the top right corner that tells me, okay, I have three subtools within this model. So that's my main one. This is my hint. I always look for the numbers. And um, what I have to do is go into the Z skin, a uh, skin sphere, and uh, select it, copy back to the main model and paste. And I can select my original uh, Z sphere, turn off the preview, and turn off visibility, and select the Z skin sphere, uh, skin uh, and rename it to horns. Horns, and uh, the f this first model will be uh, Z sphere uh, horns, and also this one will be renamed to Z sphere body. So this is our basic model with a couple of Z spheres and um, and with um, shift F and uh, with the basic dynamic solution and um, I can turn off transparency so now I have two main subtools I can switch between the body and uh, the horns by using the alt and tap function okay 
we have other functions for z squares as well uh, but right now this is the main uh, way to create a basic uh, z square body uh, in the dynamesh so thank you and see you next time